Hi there, my name is Dr. Lynn Carson and I am a Bakerpedia influencer. Today, I will be taking a trip to the Wheat Marketing Center to see the Mixolab in action with Dr. Jane Bach. So what is a Mixolab, you may ask? The Mixolab is a unique tool specifically designed for bakers. A new option called the Dough Kit makes it possible to analyze doughs at various stages of the baking process, therefore allowing a complete and objective overview of the mixing and baking process in general. I think the Mixer Lab is about the only equipment in the world that can analyze the evolving dough during mixing, baking, and cooling. It provides a complete information on the characteristics of flour and dough. Based on this objective information it provides, it is possible to set up clear specifications on wheat flours that works well for your industrial process. In addition, the integrated software measures each of the standard curve parameters and converts them into six qualitative indices like absorption, mixing, gluten plus, viscosity, amylase, and retrogradation. It is a perfect and unique tool for quality control of raw materials because specific target profiles can be created to better screen and detect underperforming flowers. Talk about AI and automation. This is the tool for it. So I think you know where I'm coming from. In terms of flower blending or usage of enzymes, you can test if a flower needs correction with the Mixolab tool. In the end, the Mixolab is a unique comprehensive and versatile analytical instrument. It works in a small sample size and requires only 50 to 75 grams of dough. It can be used for many different materials, including wholemeal flour, gluten-free flours, plant-based proteins, and so on. It actually does provide a detailed and precise information on all these flowers. Today, we are meeting with Dr. Jane Bach from the Wheat Marketing Center here in Portland, Oregon. Here is Dr. Jane Bach. Hi, my name is Dr. Jane Bach. Welcome to the Wheat Marketing Center. Today, I'm gonna to be running a Mixolab test for you so you can see how this instrument runs. So what I've done is I've input all the flower information into the dialog box here. And some of the key things, in addition to just naming your test, you can set the moisture basis for your flower. I've entered my moisture content and my target water absorption. And so the dialog box automatically calculates the amount of flour that I need to weigh out, which I've already done. And then this is the amount of water that the instrument will automatically add while I'm running the test. So I've already decided that I'm gonna use the Chopin Plus protocol. It lists all the parameters right here. But of course, you can always change these parameters and choose a different protocol if this is not ideal for the flower you wanna test. So let's go ahead and start the test. So the software automatically pulls up videos showing what you need to be doing at any particular point in the test. So at this point, I need to be adding the flour. So using the funnel that comes with the instrument, make sure I get all the flour in. Right now, what it's doing is calibrating, and it's time to put the water in. And so the instrument has automatically um, dosed the water into the test. 
And for the duration of the test, we leave this in place to prevent the water from evaporating, especially during the heating step. And so right now, what the instrument is doing is it's mixing that water into the flour and it's measuring the torque on the curve and you can watch that uh, torque curve start to develop. And so while the test is running, especially during the first phase where we're holding temperature constant and we're just evaluating uh, the torque profile, the mixing parameters, this C1 torque value will show as red while you're outside of the range. Once you reach the desired torque range between these two pairs of dotted lines, this box will turn green, showing you that you've hit your target torque value. Dr. Jane, what information does the MixoLab provide? So by combining the mixing stage with a heating and cooling stage, you basically get all the information about mixing, plus information about that final transformation, that heating step, that critical heating step that's gonna take place in the oven. So some of the key parameters that come out of this test would be things such as the water absorption. Um, and this will tell you how much water carrying capacity that flour has, how much water you need to put into that dough. It'll also give an indication of mixing stability. So this is really an indicator of um, how much processing that this flour can withstand. Um, initial resistance to heating. So if we look at this portion of the curve, um, this can be summarized by this parameter right here, which is the slope um, of that portion of the curve. It's really an indication of the volume increase that you might expect to see during baking. Um, so how does heat affect that gluten and does it affect it in a way that's going to allow for nice oven spring? Um, viscosity at high temperatures, so this particular peak um, in the curve, um, also indicated by the C3 value, um, does give an indication of um, product color um, specifically because it's impacted by amylase. Um, and we will see the impact of amylase activity um, through the peak of this curve here. And then of course, the viscosity at cooling, which is all the way down here, this portion of the curve. So this would be your C5 value here. So this really gives an indication of potential shelf life, um, especially related to texture, that starch retrogradation um, that impacts the, the firming of bread over time. Um, those are all things that you can pick up from this test uh, looking at these curves, but there's a lot more than that. What is the purpose of heating a dough? So a lot of the tests on the market really focus on the mixing um, properties of a flour, and that is good for helping us understand how that dough is going to mix, how it's going to process, what the energy requirements are. But what we're missing in that fundamental equation there is we're missing the final transformation. What is the heat actually going to do to that starch? And so by heating the dough in the Mixolab, you start to get a sense for um, how much cook you can get on that starch, um, what the volume increase is going to be like in the oven. It's a more complete picture of how that particular flour as a dough is going to behave through the final baking step. How different is it to analyze starch compared to using other instruments like the RVA or the amylograph? So the main difference uh, between the Mixolab heating portion and some of the other instruments that are on the market is that these other instruments typically will heat the flour or a starch sample um, with excess water. So you're creating a slurry or, or basically a batter where there's more than enough water to fully gelatinize the starch um, and 
that's really not the reality in the oven. Um, you're typically in a moisture limited system. You're with the, you're in a dough where there's more than just the starch competing for the water. You have soluble fibers, you have proteins, and other ingredients in a complex dough system. And so this is maybe a little bit more of an accurate depiction of how that starch is going to perform during heating in an actual dough system. Dr. Jane, can the Mixolab offer up a new approach to quality control for bakers? So the Mixolab 2 actually has a new accessory called the dough kit. And so what bakers could actually do is they can actually pull dough from their processing line. They could pull it out of their mixer, they could pull it at a different step in the processing, put it into the Mixolab with that dough kit, and then get a more fundamental or complete understanding of, of what their dough behavior is like in real time, and you can make corrections on the fly based on how that dough is performing with the dough kit. How can the Mixolab be used to improve the communication between Miller and Baker? One of the functions that the software offers is this six-point spider graph characterizing each flower. So what I've done here is I've loaded the curves for three different flowers that we were using for Chinese steam bread production. And I've also loaded our Chinese steam bread profile here. And you can see on these six indices on the spider graph, we have this green region where if our flower falls in that region, it's considered ideal or optimal for our process for our steam breads. What we're seeing here are the spider graphs for these three particular flowers. And if we look closely, we see that this orange curve fits this green profile more closely. And for our pro process and our profile would be considered the more optimal flower compared to the other two. And so for each product and each process that you use, you can develop your own optimal profile that you can then use to communicate back and forth with your miller. Dr. Jane, what if the flower does not fit the baker's specification? There are other functions in the software that will help the baker figure out corrections that they can make. One of those functions would be the blending law function. So you can enter in all the flowers that you have available into this function. And what it will do will help you figure out how you might need to blend those flowers together to create a more optimal flower profile. The other function that you can use is the additive function. And so looking at things like vital wheat gluten, L-cysteine, enzymes, things like that, if the flower is not fitting your ideal profile, this function will help you identify an additive strategy that might help to correct some of the deficiencies of that flower. Is it possible to analyze other types of products other than wheat flour with the Mixolab? Absolutely. So this can be used for a whole wide array, wide array of materials. You can use this with whole wheat or whole meal, uh, whole grain type flours, gluten-free blends. The application team at Chopin has been very busy using it to look at the effect of different additives, for example. Uh, vital wheat gluten, enzymes, different forms of yeast, impact of sugar, salt, uh, things like that. You can also use it to analyze more complex full formula dough systems. What would the effect of eggs be? What would the effect of different levels or types of shortening or, or fats? There's a whole range of things that you could do with this instrument. It's not just for um, white flower quality. Hi, I'm Dr. Jane Bach, Technical Director at the Wheat Marketing Center. And once again, thank you for joining me today to learn more about the capabilities of the Mixolab.